Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Irvin, also known as Kubelman. Today we are going to talk about networking, and this is specifically networking for on-site tech support. So let's say you got hired to work on-site for some company, and you are the person physically present there. I got the idea from a viewer called Tsutomi Suzuki. Thank you very much for submitting this ticket. So this is a ticket that came to my system and it's basically a request and it says, would you please give some examples of network switch, typical troubleshooting. The job I'm applying for requires knowledge for that. Thanks. Yes, absolutely. So this is a great idea and I really want to talk about that because it's been a while since I've done any networking videos. All right. So let's say you're doing this tech support on site and somebody says my computer or my device is not connecting to the network now in this case we're talking about physical connections and for those reasons i have an example of a wall plate with labeled network ports and different color connectors on the plate itself so let's have a look this is what you would typically see next to a computer or next to a device. And you can see that these are ports that are labeled. Each one of them should be labeled so that way you know which port to look for in case this port needs to be patched, meaning that needs to be physically connected with a network cable. This is what it means to patch a port. You basically go and you connect it with a physical cable inside of a data closet or a server room. And we'll get to that as well. So here's an example of this. This port right here is labeled AV, A-V-41. And then next one to it is A-V-42. What this means is that if there is no connection to this port, and you can check this by looking at the device where the cable is connected to, the back of the device would have, a, you typically would have an LED flashing and it would say there is connectivity to it. That's a good indicator that the port is physically patched in, physically connected, means from here to the switch in the data room, right? However, you may still not work and this could be related to the virtual LAN settings, but that's something we will talk about further in the video. So for now, we've got red and we've got blue. This a lot of times means that they are both on different VLANs, but you can see here an example that we got A-V-41 on this top one, which is this first one, red one. And the bottom one here, the blue one, it says A-D-39. So chances are these blue ones are on a different virtual local area network. All right, so just keep that in mind, but let's pretend that this first one here is just basic VLAN that we need to set it up to, which could be a lot of times is just a default VLAN. All right, so let's go into the data closet. So you physically walk, da -da 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 -da, you walk to the data closet to the server room and you look for this port just to make sure that it's connected physically. All right, so here's an example of what you would see in a data room. You would see a switch, which in this case is this top part of it. And you can tell because it's numbered like this. These are the physical ports here that this person is patching this cable into. So let's pretend that this port 18 here is this top one here. We can now connect or patch the cable into it. So this is what this person is doing. They're physically connecting that port 18, so that way it has connection back over here. Here's another example of different ports that are on the wall plate. So you can see there are tons of different ports, and this is not on the switch itself. This is what would appear on the other side. For example, this C-018, chances are, when you go to a device location, you would see a wall plate that has the same label. All right, so once you go to the switch room, make sure that there is a cable can go in from the port itself to the switch itself. And you can connect to this to any of the available empty ports that are on the switch if the configuration is DHCP, meaning that it's dynamically allocated IP address, meaning it's not a specific IP address and it doesn't matter which VLAN you're on. Now, if you're going to switch the VLAN, then this is something that we, you would do later on and it's done through the interface of the switch itself. But for, for now, make sure it's plugged in and you can connect to any ports. Now you have to mark, if you have to switch to different VLAN, you have to remember which port it's connected to and we'll get to that as well. All right. 
Here's another example, and I just wanted to show this picture because it looks amazingly tidy, meaning that it looks really good. This cable management is superb, and I just wanted to show you this picture of it because I want you to keep in mind that it's important to stay organized when it comes to cable management. So in this case, these are all blue cables, and in this case, you can imagine that all the blue cables are connected to this virtual LAN that is using specifically blue connectors on the plate, on the wall plate itself. So logic dictates that we need to use blue cables. Now, if you have some things that are connected to the red ports, then same thing. Over here, you want to use red cables to stay organized when it comes to this type of setup. And here are some examples of what this could look like. And here are many, many, many different pictures. Here's blue, red ones, here's blue ones. These are connected to different virtual LANs, and this is configured on the switch itself. All right. I apologize. I'm trying to make this as simple to understand because I know a lot of people new to IT are watching my videos. So if you are going to switch to a different virtual LAN connection on your network, so let's say you connect this to the red one and the red one now requires you to have a ver different vlan in this case i'm guessing here that the vlan here is labeled like v for this vlan because it says a v and the bottom one here says a d anyways you just have to make sure that it's switched to a correct vlan on the switch itself so you have to log into the switch meaning you have to access the switch over the network or you can actually connect to it directly uh, but the interface will be the same you can take your laptop plug into the switch the laptop and then get to the interface for the switch so this takes us to the point of trying to figure out which port did we use so let's go back to our picture here let's pretend that we connected our cable to the port 24 here where it says 24 so how would you figure this out? Because some of the switches are not labeled clearly at all. You can see here, if I zoom in, you can see that the port 24 is right here. And we need to know this again so we can change the VLAN. But if it's not labeled at all, some of the switches are not labeled. Some of them would just say 2 starting here, and then it would say 12 on the end. But it wouldn't have numbers up top at all. So for those reasons, you have to keep in mind that the switches, most of them, are labeled odd ones up and the even ones down and you can start counting so start counting from the top you would say one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then in this case we need switch port 24 so we start 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 so now we know that this is the port on the switch itself that we need to change to the different virtual LAN, virtual uh, local area network. And again, if sometimes these are not labeled like they are on this switch at all, so you just need to know how to count this properly. This seems like a small thing, but when you have all of these ports, sometimes you get confused. Even I sometimes get confused which one, so I have to go back and start counting, one, two, three, four. Anyways, you get the idea. So how do we get to the port itself how do we log into the switch here's an example of what is a monitoring interface for switches and you can have a lot of times you have multiple switches that are stacked as shown in the picture over here where's my picture here it is sometimes you have multiple switches that are stacked so it's called a network stack and then you need to figure out well which which switch do i need to log into so hopefully they're labeled uh, in the data closet and at least you get an idea of which one you need and then you have to pick a different stack based off of that now just to keep this simple make sure you look at the label in the net in the network closet where it says the name of the switch and if the switches themselves are numbered sometimes they would be one two three four make sure you look at the one that is labeled so in this case I believe we looked at the first one so once we get our network interface so in this case let's pretend our switch is this one here the first one and it says in this case Acidian. it's named that you can name it whatever you want dash 100 dash 2 dash 1 
So this is something that should be labeled on the switch itself. All right. So we look for that and then we simply click on it, which will give us monitoring of the device itself. We can look at the health device of it. And this is something networking folks would get into. But it's if you're interested, you can certainly look at it. But if you are using a network interface monitoring tool like ACIPS in this case, what you need to do is once you select it and then you open it up, it will give you an option to select the device itself and go to the interface of it. And there are two different versions of the interface. There is the SSH one, which means secure shell. And for you, it just means that it's basically all command prompt, command line. And that's a little bit more advanced and you're more than welcome to explore that if you want to learn about that. But we're trying to keep it simple. So what we want is a web interface where we can just find our switch, find our port, and switch it to correct VLAN that we need for that device. And here are some examples of that. Here's a sonic wall example of that. And you, there are tons of these, by the way. There are tons of these different network switches that you can look at. So this is within the device itself. And then you can see which ports that we need. Here's our port 24. So we have to make sure that we select that. And on the right hand side, we can look at the port settings and make, make sure that it's connected to the correct VLAN. And it's highlighted on our right side, which port we need to switch it to. And in case if you're using Sonic wall, you can select a different port. And this is done on the VLAN selector right here. And you have to make sure that it's selected to access, access mode, which is fine. You usually don't have to worry about that. But just make sure that you select the correct VLAN. And here you would do the drop down. And if it needs to be on a VLAN labeled 201, then that's fine. But if you need to switch it to correct one, you would just use a drop down and go down here and confirm. So this is one example. Here's another example. And this is a Cisco setting. This is a Cisco switch. And within the port settings, you would select the switch. In our case, here is our switch 24. And, and here for this example, switch number one or port number one is selected. But you can see that this port itself is configured to access VLAN number one. And then from here, you can change it to different ones. So you, let's say it's on two, you type in two and you select apply. In this case, we would select 24, make sure that it's on the correct one, select apply, and then Sometimes the device itself needs to reboot, sometimes not, but after that, it should work. So let's say device that is connected to this port right here needs a specific VLAN, which we've done. We've changed the VLAN for it. We know how to do that. But let's say it also needs an IP reservation created for it. So that way, when this device is connected, it gets a unique IP address that doesn't change. So let's assume for some reason, this is what is going on. It could be a server. It could be just a, a device that we don't want the IP to change whatsoever. So we need to create a reservation for that specifically. Here is our DHCP server. And if you don't have this, make sure you connect to the correct DHCP server. In this case, the server name is dc.1.corp, etc. If you want to collect to a, connect to a different server that you have access to, select action add a server and you can type in the name of the server with the, the name of it or its IP address or you can simply select of what is available to you which is says this authorized DHCP server and then we would select it right here. Now in order to find out what the server is you can look at the gateway for your computer where the DHCP server is. So if I just type in IP config it gives me where the default gateway is. In this case, it says here, which is just a virtual version six IP address, but hopefully you get just a regular version four IP address, which is something that we can understand. For example, this one here, and then you can connect to it by simply typing it in, in here. In this case, we are connected to the correct DHCP server where we can create our reservations. Now you would have sometimes multiple ones. So if you have virtual LANs, you would have different scopes for those LANs. So in this case, if you see dc1-.corp-cuntoso.com, if there is a virtual VLAN called DC2, you would make sure that you select that one and expand it. So you may have a list of bunch of different VLANs with bunch of different scopes, meaning 
different IP ranges. Scope means different IP ranges that you can play with. In this case, let's pretend that this is the correct VLAN. So you will expand it, expand IP version 4. Here's the scope that I was telling you about. This is the IP range that we have available to when it comes to IP addresses as assignments. So if we need to create a reservation, we can expand reservations. Right now, there are no reservations in this here. But if we look at the address leases, we can see a couple of devices that are connected to it. You can see there is a couple of, there is a blink and there is, there's a blink device and there is a client too, which is just a regular computer. These are not reservations. These are just dynamically allocated, randomly allocated uh, IP addresses based on availability. Okay. So if we want to create a reservation, select reservations, right click reservations, select new reservation, name it. You can name it whatever you want. Let's say new reser reservation. However, this kind of doesn't matter because it will get renamed based off the name of the device that is connected to and receives this reserved IP address. So let's say the name of this device that's that's connected that's connected to this port is client 15 connects to this port, right? Once it connects to this port and it gets this reserved IP address that we're going to give it to, this will change automatically to client 15. It will automatically get changed because it picks up whatever the name of that device is that is that is configured on the device itself. So the IP address, of course, look at what's available when it comes to IP address. Since we, there are no other reservations, we saw what was available in the current address leases. I will just type in the next available IP address that I just kind of saw, and the, it will just be that. And then you need the MAC address for that device itself. So this is a physical, also known as physical address. It's just the way you identify each device on the network. To find that out, go back to your command line, type in ipconfig forward slash forward slash all, and then look for the MAC address for that device. So here it is. Is it physical address? Right here. Let's pretend this is it. Plop it in there. Remove the dashes because the HCP doesn't like dashes. And then description here is actually important. This is something that will stay on here and say IP. Well, well, you can just describe what the device is. Let's say it's just a server. Server in HR. Let's just say it's that, right? And then select add and it will add it on there. There it is. It popped in there. So the next time this device connect, it will get that specific IP address. You can also convert existing existing IP addresses into reservations. You can see this one that we've just added here. It says inactive right now because we haven't rebooted this device or in some cases device is not even connected. Device is not even connected. But once it's connected, it will say active. It would say active and the lease, the IP lease on it never expires. This is why you don't have anything for date here. It's permanent. If I wanted to change one of these devices to reservation, and let's say the device is already connected and you just want to use that IP address, that's fine. Either way, you can just right click it and just select to add reservation. And then it says lease converted successfully to reservation. Now we can see this other device that's already on here. And if we go, if we right click it, go to properties, we can change whatever we want on here. And you can see how it, the reservation name, it took on whatever the device was named, but in the description, we can change it and add description to whatever we want. All right. I hope you like it. These are the basic networking troubleshooting and setup and configuration that you need to do as on site tech support. I really hope this helps you. Let me just go back here. Suzuki, I really hope this helps you. I apologize if it took me a while to get to your ticket. I think it's how long ago? A few months ago this was submitted. But if you want to submit issues to my ticketing system, please let me know. And then I'll send you a link to that as well in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share it with friends that like this type of knowledge or need this type of training just like Suzuki does. And 
I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.